Hello everybody, in this episode we're going to be talking about pipe sizing on your residential drain and waste plumbing system. Now there's a lot of old plumbers out there have been doing it for years and years uh, and they know, they know there's codes, but if you ask them, well why do you put a two inch pipe on a wash machine box? And they'll say, well that's how you do it, that's the way you've always done it, uh, how would you do it? Well, in the code book, there's actually numbers and calculations to figure out uh, how to do this. And that's what we're going to be talking about. So I think the first place we need to start is with what they call drainage fixture units or DFUs. Now in the code book, there's a big old chart and every fixture is in that chart and it has a number that will tell you what that drainage fixture unit is. And they're simple numbers, they're low numbers and pretty easy to do the math. So uh, let's start with this uh, lavatory here. Uh, this actually has a one for its drainage fixture unit. Uh, and um, the smallest pipe size you can use is an inch and a quarter. Most people are used to using an inch and a half. We don't see a whole lot of inch and a quarter, but you can use inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter at a quarter inch fall or a half inch fall can handle a lavatory, that one, two drainage fixture units, I believe it is. But after that, you're going to have to step up when you add your second lavatory. Now these numbers accumulate. So if I got one here and one here and I tie these two together, I'm actually going to have two. So what we normally do is we run an inch and a half pipe and then when we join these two together, we jump up to two inches. You've got plenty of drain fixture units at a quarter inch fall on a two inch pipe to be able to handle this system. I pulled out my code book here because I wanted to make sure I got some of these numbers right and I'm telling you the right thing. Now there is a big chart here that has my fixtures and it tells me what my drainage fixture units are and uh, I know a tub shower unit like this uh, has a DFU of two, drainage fixture unit of two, this counts as two. Uh, now if I flip my page here I can look and see that an inch and a half pipe at a quarter inch fall uh, will handle three. So you could use a quarter inch pipe on this. Now that tub shoe down there is a quarter inch pipe, but we're pretty much from there we're going to jump up and use a two inch P-trap on that. Um, now when it comes to toilets, now a toilet I can look on my table here and it tells me as long as it's less than 1.6 gallons per flush, which most of our residential toilets are nowadays, it has a drain fixture unit of three. Well, now I can go back over to this table over here and I go, well, an inch and a half pipe will handle three drain, drain fixture units. Uh, why, why can't I just hook an inch and a half pipe to the bottom of the toilet? Now this is where code gets you because you got to really look through here. And sometimes if it doesn't say anything about it anywhere in the code, then, then there's no code on it. But they'll slip a little line in there somewhere and it'll say one little thing and that is the code and it changes all these tables and everything and when it comes to the toilet it's right down here it's a little footnote G and it's written small it says the minimum size of any branch servicing a water closet water closet is a toilet to us plumbers servicing a water closet uh, sh shall be shall be three inches Okay, so that tells me right there that coming off of the bottom of my water closet, no matter what these charts tell me, I have to have a three inch pipe on that water closet. Which brings me to another thing that's in the code book. At no point can you reduce the size of your drainage pipe on a gravity line. If you're running a two inch line and you come across a water closet or, or whatever and you jump up to three inches, you cannot jump back down to two, two inches. You cannot reduce it anywhere uh, once you've gone to that size. The only exception to that rule, and it's a one-liner in the, the old code book, is this guy here. We call this a closet flange, a water closet flange, or a four by 390. The code makes the exception for this guy. We can put a four inch toilet flange right on top of that and then run three off the bottom of it. It's kind of like a long sweep three inch 90. Uh, it gives you a little bit more 
uh, for that water coming off that wastewater coming off the bottom of that toilet. But this is the only acceptable reduction because you're four to three, but it is in the code and closet 90s are perfectly fine. But nowhere else are you going to reduce anything. The other thing to remember when you're calculating this stuff out is those DFUs are accumulative. Say we're back over there at that double lab and we're coming across, well we've already got two there. We're going to pick up this tub, we're going to add two more, so we're at four. Uh, and say we're going to pick up a kitchen sink, that also counts as two. So we keep adding as we go for that full flow of the pipe. Continuing on with your toilets here. Now, the code said I have to have a three inch pipe coming off of that first water closet. Now, what happens when I get to the next one? Well, I'm still fine with a three inch pipe on two toilets. Because if I look at my code book here, a three inch pipe at a quarter inch fall can handle 42 DFUs, drainage fixture units. Uh, but there is a little footnote here. It says after the fourth toilet, if I put four toilets in this house, after that fourth toilet where it ties in, I have to jump up to four inch. It's, it's a one liner here in the code book, even though I can handle what? 42 drain fixture units and a toilet only counts as three, that's part of the code. That fourth toilet has to jump to a four inch pipe. That four inch pipe, when you leave the house and you're underground with a sewer line, that also has to be a four inch pipe, a minimum of four inch pipe. You cannot continue to run three inch on out of the house. That buried sewer line has to be a four inch pipe. So you're gradually going to go up in size as you go. You're going to start small at your lavatories and then you're going to pick up a toilet, uh, a shower and move throughout the rest of the house, gradually increasing in size till you get outside or you hit that fourth toilet and you're going to be at a four inch pipe. Not a whole lot of room up under here and the camera angle is kind of weird, but I did want to show you this. Now this episode is not about how to install this pipe, I'm just talking about pipe sizing. Now right here, um, I've got an insulated 2 inch P-trap. Up above me here, I have a freestanding tub. That freestanding tub counts as two drain fixture units, but we're going to use a 2 inch pipe, a 2 inch P-trap down here. Behind me, this is coming off of a shower. Um, now. It's just a regular shower with just one shower head, so it's still two DFUs. Now when these two come together at this Y down here, we're going to jump to four. Now we're tying into a trunk line that's coming off of one of the toilets from upstairs, so we've already jumped to three. So when we hit this three inch trunk line, yeah, we're just going to go with the three inch. Now we've got the three off of the toilet. We've got the two here giving us five. And then we've got two behind us giving us seven. So what was that three inch pipe? Like 36 DFUs? We're perfectly fine. Now we gotta follow that code coming off that toilet, so it's gotta be the three inch pipe. But I just wanted to give you an idea of kinda how this stuff looks underneath. I just wanted to show you this here. Uh, this is actually a rough end for a double lavatory like we had in the beginning of the video where it's the two sinks side by side. And uh, as you can see, I've got an inch and a half and an inch and a half stubbed out for each sink and then it comes together at this cross and then we go up to two inch. Uh, we probably would be perfectly fine with an inch and a half but we like this. This is less likely to get clogged. Not really anything in code that says we have to do it like this but this is a great method because we just pop our vent right off the top uh, and it works out really well for us. Now everything is pretty much low numbers you're going to be your ones your twos your threes uh, as long as your toilet is less than a 1.6 gallon flush which pretty much most residential toilets are now because of epa codes and stuff like that um, but if you're dealing with a commercial toilet that flushes with more water you might have a four or five or six or something um, the other thing would be some of your custom tile showers those can go up in numbers as you start adding more shower heads. I think uh, 5.7 gallons a minute is where it breaks and it becomes a three instead of a two drain fixture units or drainage fixture units. Uh, and it goes up from there. 
every time you add more and you're using more water, those custom showers can just add up and add up, well, especially you got body sprays and rain heads and stuff like that. You're going to have to look at the code because you could be looking at a three inch pipe on a shower depending on how much water you're using and that's what those drainage fixture units are, are all about uh, but I hope that gives you an idea like I said I'm not teaching you how to install the stuff here I'm just teaching you about sizing in this episode and there are charts in the code book that will tell you for the fixtures and they will tell you for the pipes and then you got to look for those little footnotes because the code will get you sometimes it could say one little place some little one-liner and that's the code, that's the law, uh, and you gotta go by it. If you can't find it in the code book anywhere, then it, it doesn't exist. So, all right guys, well I hope you learned something and thanks a lot for watching.